Welcome to a new video. This will be a review and teardown of this power profiler device. So this can be useful if you're trying to measure the power usage of a particular board that you are working on. It can internally generate an adjustable voltage power supply rail which it outputs on these terminals and you can use that to power your device under test. Then by using the supplied PC software for this, you can analyze the power usage of your device in great detail. As you may remember, I also have a joule scope, which is an awesome piece of equipment, high resolution, high dynamic range for doing uh, the exact same kind of analysis, but it does not include that power supply feature. Uh, this guy with its included power supply, it's closer to something like an OT arc, because that product also includes the power supply. So I might make some comparisons in terms of specs with these devices during the video. First off, full disclosure, I got this device for free for the purpose of this review from TechRejo, which is selling these units on Amazon and on Tindy. This is a Chinese company and the product was shipped from Shenzhen, China. My unit is likely one of the early units, might contain some bugs, but we'll see about that during the third down. Packaging was not great, presumably also because I got one of the early units, so they have not established proper packaging for the product yet. Uh, it did have some loose foam padding in the box, but clearly insufficient as my unit seems to have been uh, slightly uh, bent during shipping. The front and uh, the uh, back panels uh, are aluminium, but they have been deformed slightly and I'm thinking the package was maybe dropped on the side and the two halves of the enclosure uh, just moved in separate directions which uh, pushed on these uh, front panels. I hope they fix this packaging issue because we all know shipping can be brutal. Inside the box you get a uh, power brick which uh, kind of feels low quality uh, you also get a mains IEC cable with a uh, plug adapter and a set of uh, test leads with banana plugs and J clips uh, the cable feels nice on these it's flexible but uh, the connectors are low quality and you're likely to encounter uh, problems if you'll be using uh, this kind of uh, banana plugs uh, long term i will be replacing these with some of my own test leads in my opinion instead of including cheap test leads you might not include them at all it just saves the final user the trouble of dealing with bad test leads for example uh, this banana connector uh, construction type is notoriously bad the PC app and PDF user manual have been shared by email uh, by the Tech Rejo company and uh, they are actively working on those. There's been at least a few revisions since I've started my discussion with them a couple of months ago. I would also add that the communication with them has been really nice. They speak good English so it was very easy to communicate with them. Now before we continue with powering on the unit, let me mention the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround time. But you can get more than PCBs manufactured with PCBWay, they also do PCB assembly, injection molding, 3D printing, machining various parts so you can have an entire prototype built using their services. Check out their website, link below. The front panel features the two output banana plugs which are quite widely spaced apart, uh, two rotary encoders, uh, they are kind of crammed together and a couple of seven segment displays for uh, voltage and current so that you can get readings independent of the PC app. On the back of the unit we get the uh, 12 volt DC input and the USB connection for the computer plus the on off switch. Since they had plenty of space on the front panel, I think it would be nicer to have the on-off switch on the front panel, have these two output banana plugs spaced at the standard 19mm uh, spacing and the two potentiometers spaced wider apart. And by the way, the uh, model number on this uh, unit is EMK850S+. They don't tell us much in terms of specs for this unit, but they do mention input voltage is 12 volts DC, output voltage adjustable between 0.5 and 12 volts, measurement range uh, 0.1 microamps up to 2 amps, so th this provides microamp resolution current measurements with a sample rate of 10 kilosamples per second. 
no claims on accuracy as of now uh, but maybe they'll add those later as i said this is a new product if we compare it to the dual scope which has a 2 meg sample rate and one nanoamp resolution uh, the tech rejo unit is clearly lower spec uh, but it's also less expensive so i think we are now ready to power up the uh, unit and start connecting it to the computer and because there isn't much else to see on the exterior and upon powering the unit up and having it, having it uh, connected on the uh, USB port of your computer you will notice it will create a serial port so that's nice because you don't need any specific drivers but technically speaking you can only do that with uh, the lower sampling uh, speeds like they have here uh, 10 kilo samples per second the next thing you'll notice is the front panel display uh, you can adjust the voltage uh, course and find from these two uh, potentiometers you can push on one of them to enable the output or you can push the other knob to zero the current measurement and you will get a live reading of the uh, current uh, here on the uh, display but this is only going to be useful for static operation of the uh, device uh, under test if your device under test has a more complicated dynamic operation where it quickly switches between sleep and wake up time such a display doesn't help much uh, it does provide a decent number of updates per, sec per second but still limited usability out of this that's where the pc app starts to become very important because looking at the waveform and uh, calculating energy usage that's where it can be very helpful so let's switch to the pc app the pc app is windows only it does not need a special driver to be installed due to that serial port implementation it comes as a zip archive you don't need to install anything uh, just to run an exe file i've had trouble running this on a windows 7 machine when i first tried it but uh, then it was running fine on a windows 10 machine and later on the manufacturer confirmed they do recommend running it on windows 10 once the interface is up and running it appears to automatically detect and connect to the power monitor it defaults to Chinese language but it's fairly easy to change it to English as shown here the downside is that it doesn't seem to remember the settings so it will uh, always start up in Chinese once the output is turned on from the physical knobs on the unit and you click the startup button you will start getting readings in the interface and the waveform starts showing stuff in my experience it helps if you can replicate the physical controls in the graphical user interface like you know simple buttons on or off for the output uh, and have the graph and data logging running automatically based on that or maybe have these separate controls for data logging with buttons like you know record pause stop uh, these buttons uh, which are named startup stop pause reset sampling refresh device are a bit confusing to me especially since they are placed in these panels for example this one is named operating so overall they they could improve this uh, user interface by adding some clear naming for this demonstration i have connected a board with a microcontroller that wakes up at the predetermined intervals then goes back to sleep and the sleep current is in the 600 microamp range uh, we should see over 1 milliamp when it wakes up and we do see those numbers in the data display area at the bottom of the screen but the graph doesn't automatically scale according to the measured values the way the zoom works on the waveform is a bit non-intuitive uh, in my opinion and it took a while for me to figure out how this is working but if you click the auto zoom button um, then it will try to automatically zoom based on your mouse cursor position so if you position your mouse cursor on the x-axis it will zoom on the time axis and if you position your cursor on the y-axis it will try to zoom vertically on the uh, current measured current axis like i said this feels a bit non-intuitive that should be like a checkbox instead of a button to let you know that it's like a function that you tick and it stays active i don't know that's just how i feel about this the waveform can be deceiving because depending on the zoom level you might not see peak or max value but to help with that you have the data display panel at the bottom for example looking at this waveform you might think we have a peak at 750 micrograms as seen on the waveform but looking at the window statistics down here we notice the max was recorded at 17 milliamps 
and if you activate the max value waveform option it becomes apparent that we have a peak of 17 milliamps in that region however i cannot zoom zoom in on that peak uh, on the waveform and i find that very confusing because no matter how much i try to zoom in i just cannot see that that peak on the blue uh, line that is the actual waveform now let's say you've finished capturing data and you want to export that at csv you can do that and by looking at the csv file uh, i noticed that there is about eight samples per second so it must be doing some kind of averaging i'm guessing and not saving the full data record which might make sense because it could end up with a huge file if it's saving all 10k samples per second. I'm hoping the app will get improved and there are signs that point in that direction. For example, while keeping in contact with the manufacturer, they sent me two or three revisions of the app as they were improving things. So they are actively developing. But then again, you should never uh, purchase a uh, piece of test gear on the promise of functionality that will be added later, but on what is actually available at the time of purchase. Now let's also open up the unit to take a look at how it's built inside. It should be fairly straightforward to uh, do that with like four screws holding in the uh, front panel and four on the back panel. And it looks like a fairly clean construction inside. Uh, it's a two bore construction, one from the, for the uh, front panel and a, uh, another one for the main board. Let me just take a closer look at this board and identify some of the chips we have in here and I'll be right back. The mechanical construction is pretty good because internally the boards are secured on mounting posts with screws so interestingly they have a purple PCB for the front panel and green for the main board um, but the display or front panel board just has an LED driver for driving those seven segment displays nothing interesting happening on here they are using two of these uh, pigtails to connect to the main board and i can say that they could have used a single one for connecting the two pcbs instead of two and i believe that would improve the manufacturing and lower their assembly cost uh, now the main board has a design date code of uh, november uh, 2021 and a manufacturing date code of December 2021 so that's fairly recent and as expected with uh, this being uh, like an early test unit we do have some flux residue from the little adjustments they probably made for tuning some capacitor or resistor values stuff like that but other than uh, those uh, fixes it just looks a very clean construction. Uh, the main processor we have here is an STM32F3 uh, MCU and this is an interesting microcontroller I had this MCU in my go for NPS 1601 front panel project because um, it has a fairly good built-in ADC and DAC the uh, USB interface is not isolated and it connects directly to the MCU which is running that virtual serial port application and we do have a um, good number of different DC to DC converters for generating the power supply rails on this board. We have the TD1509P5. This is a DC to DC 5 volt 2 amp output step down converter for the uh, 12 volt DC input. Then we have a uh, number of different LDOs generating 3.3 uh, volt rails from that 5 volt rail. Uh, we also have this TPS65131 dual output positive and negative uh, plus and minus 15 volt rail DC to DC boost converter. This is most likely used to power the op amps. Uh, this guy is a, uh, a converter from TI which I couldn't identify but it does the adjustable output conversion and is controlled by the MCU. I think the diode pair on the output uh, are TVS diodes and they are used for protecting the analog sensing stuff on the output of the circuit. And on the analog side we do have four op amps. These are OPA 189 precision low noise op amps from TI. And it looks like two of them are connected to the shunt resistor. I believe uh, this is a 30 milliohm shunt. And these three chips are INA240 specialized current sense amplifiers. 
Their entire architecture is not very clear to me at this point, uh, but they could be using two of the amplifiers connected to the 30 milliohm shunt just with different gain factors to maybe get two ranges out of that and having the other two amplifiers do the same with uh, this section of the PCB track as a shunt. I'm not entirely sure, but they clearly need a few different ranges and I'm only seeing one shunt resistor in here. What's clear is that they're using the built-in 16-bit Sigma Delta ADC inside the STM32F373 microcontroller. They might be oversampling those to get some extra bits, I don't know, but it's a clever way of keeping the cost down. A trick that, as I mentioned, we planned on using on my go for nps 1601 front panel project that has been on hold for a good while. And that's about all I can say about the electronics in here. There isn't much happening uh, in terms of hardware and the enclosure is way too big for housing all of this stuff. And if the enclosure is this big anyway, we have to mention the small improvements that would make this more ergonomic and easier to use like placing the power switch on the front panel, using standard spacing for the output jacks and uh, spacing the two potentiometers further apart. Can I recommend you to buy this unit? Well, there are a few things to consider. First, the price tag of around $300, which I think is a good price for a tool that provides this kind of functionality. I mean, personally, I would pay $300 for a device that would help me do power profiling on the boards I design. However, as we saw in the PC app review section, the app is just not up to the task in its current form. I think the naming of the different buttons and sections could be better, the data logging section could be better, we should have a better auto scaling for the waveform display, it should remember the language settings and we should have simple on-off controls as well as adjustments uh, for the output voltage. And if they would include a higher quality pair of test leads with the unit, that would make the whole deal uh, very nice. Then there's also the uh, issue of them not mentioning any accuracy specs for the unit. So I didn't do any um, accuracy tests on this unit because uh, with those results I would have nothing to compare them against. So I honestly hope they can improve the app with the things I uh, mentioned because then I could really recommend you buying this unit. As it is right now, it feels a bit short of my uh, expectations. And since the PC app is everything about a tool like this, they have to do better on that. Should you decide to order one, there will be links in the description below the video to their um, Amazon and Tindy stores. So use those links to make the purchase. I would also be very interested in hearing your thoughts in the comments below. That was all for today, thank you for watching and if you enjoy these videos you can help support the channel with as little as $1 per month via Patreon or you can just smash that like button uh, which is free but still helps a lot.